to receive the news and announcements we send to the press through our e-notifier. You can engage with us on social media. You can read the open line newsletter and your water bill are online and listen to the open line podcast. <coughs> and I'm told staff is hard at work on a new online news page that will function like a virtual magazine and provide more in-depth stories alongside the news announcements you're used to getting. It's important for us to make information available to you where you are. If there's a way you'd prefer to hear from us that we're not already providing, I know our staff would love to hear from you. We have celebrated some exciting successes in our community this year. Key among them has been the infrastructure upgrade on Opelika Road. It was a big project on a roadway we inherited from the state, and some things just did not go as we planned. We had in unforeseen complications from weather to pandemic to supply issues, not to mention the surprises we found, like a hidden layer of concrete when we opened up the asphalt. We appreciate the patience of our residents, those neighborhoods and businesses that were directly affected by this work. Let me tell you a few things that you may not know about this project and why it was worth it. It's been a long time in coming. Auburn identified Opelika Road as a key commercial corridor in need of redevelopment in 2011. That was 11 years ago, when Opelika Road with its undeveloped lots and an old hotel was an area you just drove through on your way to somewhere else. Now with its redeveloped businesses and new streetscape, I hope Opelika Road is one of your destinations. This corridor was flagged in Comp Plan 2030, one of Auburn's core guiding documents heavily informed by citizens and stakeholders. What followed was the Renew Opelika Road Plan, a plan adopted by the City Council in 2013 that paved the way for steady revitalization of this area. The Renew Opelika Road Plan created a community-endorsed vision for this major thoroughfare. The City began to realize this vision through new zoning regulations and an incentive plan for sales tax generating businesses that committed to this corridor. The city was also able to designate substantial funding towards, the ma towards major intersection and infrastructure improvements. Since the plan's inception, we've seen upgrades to major intersections along the corridor. We've seen cosmetic changes from adding landscape medians to getting rid of those old ditches that used to surround Auburn Mall. Changes in zoning regulations have helped transform the road from a state highway into an urbanized, pedestrian, bicycle, and business-friendly destination where people live, shop, and eat. About $7.6 million has been spent on infrastructure so far, and more is budgeted for further improvements. These infrastructure improvements began in tandem with the creation of the city's commercial development incentive program. Both working together are, both working together are transforming the nature of this corridor into a vibrant, economically robust destination. Even with two phases still to go in the plan, we have already far exceeded the redevelopment our community dreamed of when we were just beginning. Since 2011, businesses have invested more than $97 million into this corridor. As part of the city's commercial development incentive program, the city has partnered with 17 businesses and property owners in the Opelika Road corridor to spur quality redevelopment. Sales tax and related revenues for this area are expected to increase by $9.7 million for fiscal year 2022. Without the implementation of the Renew Opelika Road Plan, developments like Midtown would not exist. By investing time, resources, and money into this area, we are also showing long-standing community staples like NIFRS that we are dedicated to creating an environment and infrastructure that brings people to local businesses. As a result, we have retained existing businesses and attracted new businesses to the corridor, making it more vital, dynamic, and useful to residents and visitors. Thank you for sticking with us during the recent construction on Opelika Road, and I look forward to seeing this area continue to flourish. Throughout the rest of Auburn, we have carried on with improvements to traffic flow and projects that make our roadways safer, because you have told us through the citizen survey that this is a priority. To identify problem areas in town, we look at traffic volume, accident data, and many other factors. We also like to hear from people traversing our roadways every day, you the residents, our eyes, and our ears. One major intersection in need of redevelopment was the intersection of Cox and Wire Roads. Restructuring the intersection to create a traffic circle was a major endeavor by the city's engineering services team, and we celebrated its opening at the beginning of the year. 
The roundabout were greatly reduced serious injury wrecks as well as traffic congestion. We started work on our new roadway that would connect Richland Road to Martin Luther King Drive. This project is a big deal for residents living in neighborhoods off Richland and MLK who need an alternate route to and from their homes. The council was proud to dedicate this road earlier this year to Auburn Police Officer William Beekner, whose life was taken in the line of duty. We ought to never forget this great man or his name, and with the Will Beekner Parkway, we never will. Just like Officer Beekner, this new road will play an important role in the daily lives of Auburn residents, making each day a little easier and a little safer. When we get together as a community and cre create visions for the future of Auburn, we provide local government with essential guidebooks that inform our budgets, our priorities, and our capital improvement plans. We are at a milestone in the impl implementation of our Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Master Plan as we complete the first five-year phase of projects and begin budgeting for the next round. The master plan adopted by the council in 2018 provides a 20-year plan to improve the quality of Auburn's parks, recreation facilities, culture, and cultural programming. One exciting project that came out of the master plan is the Town Creek Inclusive Playground. This bright and beautiful amenity sets us apart from, from other communities because its playful, inviting environment has something for every ability and age. When designing this park, we exceeded ADA guidelines, intending to set the standard nationwide with wider sidewalks, push-button doors, and accessible seating. 90% of this park is accessible, far exceeding the required 15%. It was just several years ago when a group of Auburn residents expressed a crucial need for this inclusive space in Auburn. It continued to come up in public input meetings during the development of the master plan. As a result, this concept was added to the plan and is now a reality. Thank you to the citizens who encouraged this and to the city staff who listened, turning the vision into reality. We're proud to see people enjoying this amazing amenity where people of all abilities can play together. Last year, I spoke about the roughly $8.6 million expansion to the Auburn Soccer Complex. Construction is now well underway for this popular facility. We have 732 kids participate in our soccer rec leagues this fall, not including the 704 players we had in the spring and the 250 participants of the Auburn Thunder soccer program. That's a lot of families that rely on the soccer complex, and we need to make sure it is functioning at its highest level. When construction is over, Auburn families will have access to three additional synthetic turf outdoor multi-sport fields and a multi-purpose multi building with indoor courts, as well as additional restrooms and parking. The new facility can also double as a large event space for events like Daddy Daughter Date Night. In tandem with this project will be the enhancement of the entrance into the soccer complex. A roundabout will be installed to increase traffic flow and prevent congestion so families can come and go with ease. We will begin the expansion of the Jan Dempsey Community Arts Center before the end of the year. In addition to giving us an even better art center, the expansion will free up space at Dean Road for our well-attended therapeutic programs. These programs, specifically designed for Auburn's residents with special needs, are a valuable asset to our community and have needed room to grow for years. Expanded therapeutic programs will accommodate the, the demand for social activities, recreational activities, and more for this important segment of our population. This will be enabled by relocating the ceramic studio to the Jan Dempsey Art Center. The Art Center expansion will include a new gallery, a dance studio, new programming space, and so much more. Next year, we, we plan to begin construction on a facility that will make a major impact on the city's athletic resources, the Lake Wilmore Project. This future recreation complex will be constructed in two phases. The first will include a community center, complete with an outdoor covered and heated pool, two gymnasiums, an indoor walking track, a fitness area, classroom space, and more. Phase two will expand the offerings outdoors and include four lighted, multi-purpose fields with synthetic turf. These additions will give us more space to hold practice and games for our surging athletic programs, like our youth basketball league with more than 1,000 players. Outside of Parks and Recreation, we have an exciting new project for public safety that will help us recruit and train and develop Auburn police and firefighters, our public safety training center. 
the project located on the former rest area site across from North College Street on Highway 280 will feature a 12,000 square foot classroom building and drill tower. The classroom will give us space to train fire recruits, provide continued education for fire and police, and host Alabama Fire College certification courses for our regional training partners. Long range plans for this facility include a search and rescue maze, burn building, and a drafting pit. This will be an incredible amenity for our first responders, equipping them to continue serving our growing community with excellence. Our residents of North Auburn will also be pleased to know that Fire Station Number 6 on Farmville Road is in full operation, strategically located to provide life-saving emergency services to this rapidly growing part of our town. And now I'd just like to clap for anybody that you know or that might be here that's part of our public safety team. Y'all are awesome. The city made progress on a major new facility that will house our environmental services and public works teams off Beehive Road. These are the departments that last year maintained 2,600 acres of right-of-way and collected more than 17,000 tons of garbage, 5.6 million pounds of recyclables, and nearly 13,000 tons of bulky waste and debris from yards in all of Auburn's neighborhood. How about that? Through their near facility, we will have much more room to store materials and be better prepared to respond during storms, and they'll eventually have a nursery on site to grow the trees and plants they'll use in Auburn's right-of-ways. I'm proud that through this new facility, these departments will be even better equipped to serve our town. The Auburn Recycling Center will move from its location on North Donahue, but not far. It will hop across the street and take place currently and take the place currently occupied by the city's fleet services team. All of the, as these departments relocate, their old facilities off North Donahue will be demolished to make way for major enhancements to the Boykin Community Center campus, including a branch library, cultural resource center, and a recreation center featuring a splash pad. Before we begin this project, we are investing in Martin Luther King Drive through a major streetscape project. Much like Opelika Road, this corridor was identified as a gateway into our community and prioritized in the Northwest Auburn Neighborhood Plan. Resident input included a consensus that the corridor could benefit from infrastructure improvements that not only make the street more attractive, but help with traffic flow. The project will enhance the streetscape along MLK between Suge Jordan Parkway and Donahue Drive, adding a 10-foot sidewalk, pedestrian lighting, landscaping, and medians. A new water main will be installed as well as storm and sanitary extensions to upgrade infrastructure serving this part of town. The project will begin next year. This is only the latest investment we've made in Northwest Auburn. In the early 1980s, city staff began an aggressive plan to revitalize the neighborhood. At the time, there were unpaved streets and many homes in disrepair. In the early 80s, the city made, a significant, made significant street improvements. From 1985 to 2002, the city rehabilitated 199 houses. Using both community development block grant funding and general fund money, the city spent millions on stormwater drainage, sanitary sewer, and water upgrades in Northwest Auburn. In the years since, we've opened the Boykin Gym, created an affordable housing program, and assisted with major renovations to the Auburn's Housing Authority Moton Apartments. The city developed Sam Harris Park, demolished abandoned and dilapidated structures, and helped residents through utility and rent mortgage assistance and other services. To assist residents with affordable housing, the city formed the North Auburn Housing Development Corporation, a nonprofit responsible for the construction of housing using federal funding. The completion of the Tucker Heights affordable housing development currently being built out will bring the number of homes the city has built for first-time homeowners to 100 and 50. From 2004 to 2022, the City of Auburn's investment in Northwest Auburn totaled over $22 million. The Martin Luther King Drive improvements and the Boykin expansion will soon bring that total investment in Northwest Auburn to around $55 million since 2004. <laughs> now, 
And I can't stand before you and talk about these plans and projects without thinking of the people who make all of them happen. An equivalent of 668 full-time city employees work daily for Auburn. Here's a look at all they accomplished over the last year by the numbers. Auburn Fire saw its busiest call volume in its history, responded to more than 6,800 calls, over two-thirds of which were medical calls. Auburn Police performed nearly 160,000 security checks and investigated over 4,000 accidents. Our community services department supported more than 800 seniors through the city's community development block grant funded programs. Those funds also assisted nearly 500 youth, helped rehab five houses, and provided more than 1,000 individuals and families with housing assistance. Our garbage recycling and trash collectors made 1 million, 1.6 million collection stops last year with 20 employees. City crews repaired nine, 90 potholes, constructed 25,000 linear feet of new sidewalk, and collected 8,500 bags of litter. We kept our sewer lines in tip-top shape, cleaning more than 250 miles of lines. Our inspection services department stayed busy, issuing more than 4,500 4, permits and performing nearly 24,000 inspections. Parks and Recreation had over 6,000 participants in its youth athletic programs and hosted almost 1,000 teams in tournaments. Nearly 20,000 people attended Parks and Rec special events. Auburn Public Library patrons checked out 460,000 items and nearly 20,000 people also attended their programs. Our workforce development team worked to fill job vacancies in our local industries, helping to fill 915 open positions through hiring events and training programs. Our economic development department celebrated several expansions and new industry locations, bringing 340 jobs to our community with a total capital investment of more than $360 million over the past year. We were proud to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of one of our longtime industries, the German-based automotive parts supplier, Rosch & Posch, who came to Auburn to open its first international location in 2012. And we are proud to welcome Albix, a $120 million data center that opened in March, giving business and public entities a technological edge and greater access to high-speed internet. Thanks in large part to the investment of our federal delegation over the years, we can trace nearly 4,000 jobs, $1.7 billion in investment, and $200 million in annual wages back to the construction of Exit 50. We look forward to continuing to work with our federal delegation, including Congressman Mike Rogers, Senator Tommy Tuberville, and Senator Katie Britt. The latest endeavor enabled by Exit 50 is Bucky's, with construction underway on this $45 million investment that will bring 175 jobs to Auburn. We're excited to welcome the new downtown Publix, representing a $20 million investment in our downtown core as well as Home Goods, which opened just last week on Opelika Road. And next year, we'll welcome a downtown Target. Two new hotels will soon join the hotel at Auburn University, the Collegiate Hotel and the Laurel Hotel and Spa in downtown Auburn, making significant investments in our city and giving visitors a special experience staying in the core of our town. The demand for new hotels in the core of town is evidence that Auburn is becoming a destination for more than just Auburn Tigers football. The independent restaurant scene is booming with familiar favorites and new additions. Southern Living recently praised Auburn's culinary experience, calling it a winning food scene. These establishments have elevated the dining scene in our community, and we're grateful to each of them for taking a risk and creating something truly special for Auburn's residents and visitors to enjoy. Since this time last year, the Auburn Chamber of Commerce has celebrated 57 ribbon cuttings at local businesses. Without our business owners and entrepreneurs who took a chance on investing in our community, Auburn wouldn't be the thriving place it is today. Thank you to our local business community for investing in Auburn. And a huge thank you to the amazing teams at the Auburn Chamber of Commerce and Auburn Opelika Tourism for being a champion and a supporter of our business community and welcoming visitors to the loveliest village. Thank you. <laughs> Auburn University continues to make itself known on a national and global level. 
Under new president, Dr. Chris Roberts, I have no doubt that more great things are to come for the university and the city. We have always touted a deep bond between Auburn University and the city of Auburn, and on his first day as president, Dr. Roberts took that to heart, making it a priority to meet with our public safety teams and staff, fostering that important connection. I look forward to working with Dr. Roberts in the future and continuing the essential partnerships with Auburn University, like the Auburn Research Park, the East Alabama Health's Auburn Medical Pavilion, the Auburn University Regional Airport, and the Googe Performing Arts Center. I sincerely appreciate the work of the Board of Trustees, and I am proud to see an Auburn native and longtime business leader, Bob Dumas, leading the board. I also look forward to continuing to further my relationship with the Auburn University students who are an integral part of our city. I am hopeful to see more students civically engaged and I am committed to the ongoing dialogue we have with the Student Government Association. Collaborating with our student leaders to reach the student body who represent more than 30,000 of our citizens is crucial to both the city and the university. The SGA recently shared with us plans to launch a video series on Instagram and TikTok titled City Updates and hope students will come to rely on these quick videos to inform them of things happening at City Council and around town. Hearing the ideas generated by this group of young Auburn residents makes me excited about Auburn's future and all that we can accomplish together. Our bright future is further solidified by the outstanding public and private schools we have in our community. Auburn City Schools continues to live up to a legacy of excellence, and it's why many families choose to make Auburn their home. Our school system recently ranked number three on Niche.com's list of the 2023 best school districts in Alabama. Even with record growth, our educator sites remain set on excellence. Auburn City Schools teachers are dedicated to equipping Auburn's children for their futures. We're proud to be home to Alabama's History Teacher of the Year, Ms. Caitlin Halperin. It's because of teachers like her that the Auburn High School class of 2022 had a graduation rate of 98% and more than $23 million in scholarship offers. <laughs> Auburn City Schools doesn't just stop at the core academic studies. Students are encouraged to develop their whole selves. This school year, we have more than 1,200 student athletes 250 members of the marching band and more than 1,700 students enrolled in career technical education courses. Part of ensuring our school system's success is ensuring there's enough room to accommodate a growing student population. J.F. Drake Middle School has undergone significant improvements, including the construction of new cafeteria and fine arts building and a new academic building, and additional renovations are underway to existing buildings throughout the campus. A new gymnasium is nearing completion at East Sanford School, and 168 new parking spaces were recently added at Auburn High School. Next year, we'll welcome an elementary school on Farmville Road, Woodland Pines Elementary, which will serve grades K-2 to with a capacity for 600 students. This will be the 10th elementary school within Auburn City Schools. Auburn City Schools is also at the very beginning of a process to design a second high school off North Donahue Drive. I know immense thought is being put into every detail. Thank you to Dr. Kristen Herring, the Board of Education, the faculty, and the staff for your dedication to providing an excellent educational environment for all of our young people. Over the summer, the City Council adopted a roughly $140 million budget for fiscal years 2023 and 2024, including dedicated funding to our public schools. Passing a budget may feel routine, but in reality, it affects every citizen. It is important to understand the process, especially because it begins with the resident's point of view. The city looks to citizen input in the citizen survey, which is conducted by a consultant and mailed to a random sample every two years so that the city receives fresh input prior to the biennial budget process. The survey provides insight into citizens' priorities and concerns and gives us trends over time. For the second time, we won the ETC Institute's Leading the Way Award because of the ratings you gave us as a city. Before the budget process begins, each council member is asked to complete a form listing his or her priorities, and many of us do this based on what we hear from our constituents. 
The city manager and her staff review these documents and use them as a baseline for establishing a budget that will address our community's priorities. Public work sessions are held over multiple evenings to allow staff to present information about the budget and for the council to ask questions. This past year, results from the citizen survey told us that flow and management of traffic, city infrastructure maintenance, and the quality of the city school system were the top three areas that should receive the most emphasis over the next two years. Parks and Rec services and public safety were right behind. Flip through the budget and the city's capital improvement plan, and you'll see these priorities reflected in how your ta tax dollars are put to use. The city's total revenue had an inc average increase of 5.8% over the past five years. And the city's finance department estimates that fiscal year 2022 will end with revenue being 7.5% higher than it was in fiscal year, the fiscal year before. Auburn's rob robust economic development, strong local economy, financial policies, and institutional framework were all cited by bond rating agencies as the reason we once again earn excellent bond rating, ratings in 2022. Taxpayers benefit from these ratings in the form of less interest paid on the city's outstanding debt. In the citizen survey, 76% of our citizens were satisfied with the value received for your tax dollars. Also crucial to the budget process are the guiding documents that we create together, like the downtown master plan, the renew Opelika road plan, Northwest Auburn Neighborhood Plan, and many others. Our comprehensive long-range plan 2020 was adopted in 1998 and defined 22 goals for us to work towards by 2020. We have substantially met these goals. Our industrial sector is flourishing. Our city schools remain outstanding. And if it's not a game day, there is available parking in downtown Auburn. And don't let social media tell you otherwise. I know many of you are wondering when we will embark on another such long-range plan to define goals for the next generation. Our initial efforts were delayed as our community navigated through the height of the global pandemic. Our goal is to begin again next year. As we begin a new quadrennium, we have much to work toward and reflect on. I had the privilege of working with the 2018 City Council for the past four years, conducting the city's business through nearly 100 regular council meetings, and I want to thank the council for their dedication and commitment to Auburn and for serving their city. <laughs> this month I had the honor of welcoming three new council members who were elected in August and sworn in on November the 7th. I know I can speak for all members of the 2022 council in saying we look forward to serving you the next four years. There are a lot of good things going on here in your hometown. Even as it evolves, Auburn will always be the loveliest village. Orange and blue, an educational beacon, and so much more. Auburn is innovation and progress and forward thinking, and yet it is still tradition and cherished memories. We can veer off the path by believing these ideas are mutually exclusive. We can be innovation and tradition. The loveliest village in one of Alabama's Big Ten cities. Home for those that have been here decades and days alike. I have confidence that we will continue moving into a bright future. And that we can all embrace progress in Auburn. If to quote Mayor Jan Dempsey, that progress includes the qualities that are most humane. Civility and friendship and goodwill and civic consciousness. At the beginning of this speech, I talked about the nature of Auburn's residents, that they are the people who want to contribute to something bigger than themselves, to give back and to work together for a greater city. I want to take some time to introduce you to six individuals who put a lot into Auburn and don't ask for much back. It is my great honor to announce tonight the recipients of the 2022 Mayor's Lamplighter Awards. The Lamplighter Awards came from a story that I was told by a former pastor of mine a couple, many years ago. The famous author Robert Louis Stevenson would never go to bed when he was a child. He would stay up at night. He would always look out the window. His mom never knew what was going on, what was the distraction. And one night she went upstairs and she peeked into the door and he was looking out the window, not going to bed. 
she snuck up behind him and she looked out the window and the lamplighter was going through their community and lighting the lamps for the safety of those citizens. She said, Robert, you need to go to bed. It's just the lamplighter doing his job. She said, no, mom, the lamplighter is punching holes in the darkness. So tonight we will introduce you to six individuals, six members of our community who are punching holes in the darkness and making Auburn a better place. As I call your name, we'll ask that you please come forward. You will receive your recognition and then please stay on the stage until the end. And then afterwards, for all the families and friends, we will go outside into the lobby and take some, take some pictures. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, not an unfamiliar phrase, business, athletics, it's a common means of encouragement to meet stated goals, to win a ball game. One of the most important moments in a child's journey is the transition from living with their family, completing their K-12 education, and moving to higher education, going to college, anxiety and uncertainty, new friends, what am I going to major in, where will I live, and how much money will my parents give me to spend? Camp War Eagle is recognized as the industry standard for the orientation of inco incoming college freshmen, but it's so much more. The trip to Auburn for each student includes their family, not to pacify their insecurity, but to display the intentional plan of providing a resource field opportunity for each new Auburn student to find success in his and her years in a university environment. Whatever it takes, to create a program that is repeated over and over each summer takes a dedicated leader, a leader who is willing to do whatever it takes, no matter the task. A leader who builds an incredible team, who motivates that team, who challenges that team. The responsibility of assisting new students to make the best decisions and find the right support, fulfill their goals as Auburn men and women is important, if not critical. The leader the leader takes responsibility for this most, for, takes responsibility for this, must be skilled and demanding. Those that work to make Camp War Eagle a successful operation know that expectations are high. Complacency is not tolerated. You better do your job and you better not be late. But through that culture, our first lamplighter has not only assisted Auburn families assimilate into their new world of college, but he has assisted the staff the counselors, and their transition to their future. Through tough tasks bleeds tough love. The, through expectations comes preparations for life. Camp War Eagle, a time that signals transition. High school graduates anxiously moving towards a season of learning and friendships and preparation for their future. Camp War Eagle, a time of service for the counselors. It's hard work. It's commitment. Impending Auburn graduates anxiously moving towards a season of change, of a career, new communities, and new friends. Both are heading into transition. Both prepared by Camp War Eagle. Both influenced by a man whose impact on Auburn is immeasurable, if not generational. Whatever it takes, he does for Auburn's freshmen. He does for Auburn's family. And he does for Auburn's future. Our first lamplighter is Mark Armstrong. What do you do with an old steakhouse? Auburn was like much of the South, the era of the modern steak restaurant. Go through a line, order your side items, fill your salad bowl, order your steak. Minutes later, it's delivered right to your table, fast and casual before the term became an industry. 
Western Sizzlin began the trio began the trio on Opelika Road near Pitts Avenue, bookended by Quincy's next to the brand new Village Mall. In the middle was Golden Corral, right there across the street from Stoker Seafood and the Plaza Motel. For me, it was home to the Auburn High football pregame meal, hamburger steak, baked potato, and a large slice of buttery Texas toast, all to deliver the necessary fuel to face the Rams and the Wildcats and, of course, the Bulldogs. In 1991, a new restaurant opened in the aforementioned Golden Corral site. It came with a funny name and an even funnier decor. Using chalkboards to communicate the latest choices, murals that included recognizable images of Auburn citizens, and fish hanging from the ceiling. Our next lamplighter has created a business like no other. She has made eating fun. The company's principles are simple, great service, and great food and fun. This is modeled in her guidance every day in the restaurant. Trash, dishes, bathrooms, cooking, preparing, greeting. She can do it all and will do it all. She is gritty. She is passionate. She is driven to give her customers great service, great food, and fun. But it's not just her customers. It's her employees. She treats as family. She mentors. She empowers. She cares. She demands much, but loves even more. She once took time out of her life to live in a motor home for multiple weeks at a time in another community to help a friend open a new restaurant. When one of her employees' brother came down and was diagnosed with cancer, unbeknownst to that employee, she sent his brother a card. She traveled with an employee as he faced a life-changing medical procedure, shared a meal with him that night, had some fun with him, was there the next day after he got through with his surgery, helped and mentored and encouraged him back to health. And once a year, a group of special needs students from Auburn City Schools came to her restaurant to have a special meal together. She took time to prepare her employees, to teach them about the people that would be guests in their restaurant that night, not just to serve those students that came to share that meal, but to teach her, teach her employees how to really serve those that they live around. You can serve great food. You can provide great customer service. We see this a lot. But can you serve great food and provide great service, love and mentor your employees, give back to your community, and have fun at the same time? Since 1991, Niffers has done just that, led by a unique person with a bright vision for an old steakhouse. And the fish hanging from the ceiling, they represent her employees the ones she mentored, the ones she loved, the ones she taught how to work hard and to have fun. Our next lamplighter is Miss Keeley Biesacker. Leviticus 19.34 says, You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. One of God's messages to his people from the third book of the Old Testament. Auburn City Schools is annually recognized as one of the best. Year after year accolades, celebrations, and championships come to, the, to its campuses. The success attracts new faces as families seek the very best for their children. Our next lamplighter has spent 28 years in Auburn City Schools. She has three degrees from Auburn University, was recognized as a National Educator of the Year, Auburn City Schools Elementary Teacher of the Year, and the Alabama PTA Teacher of the Year. She has been published and has a long list of professional development. Without question, she is one of the teachers that makes the Auburn City Schools classroom a special place for our children. But tonight is about her heart. And one of her best friends says, frankly, that she has the purest heart. She takes her call as a servant leader to heart. 
She intentionally looks for ways to serve with no expectation of anything in return. All of those new students were looking for ways to get involved, so she created a program at her school, Yarborough Elementary School, called Club Day. It's a way to make sure that every student has an interest to pursue. To make sure that their parents knew that everything was okay, she started sending newsletters to those parents, letting them know that was ha what was happening at the school and how they could get involved. And what about those new teachers that come to this growing school system? The new teachers that land in Auburn, a community that's on the move, where expectations are high and recognition is often. She created the SWIM program for mentoring new teachers to Auburn City Schools, teachers who were once visitors but now are teachers, helping them during a time of professional and personal transition. This is part of her legacy and always will be. This intentional effort to welcome sojourners is found in other areas of her life. At church, she serves as a greeter to welcome those that are new. She is there for many of her friends' children who attend Auburn and need a parent while away at college. She even invited a couple of her very best friends for a ladies' trip to celebrate one of her big birthdays and then paid for their entire trip. Hebrews 13.16 tells us that do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. She has welcomed strangers. She has taught and loved our children. She has intentionally cared for so many in our community. Her career and her life has been a testament of good service to Auburn. She has never, ever neglected to do good, and she's always willing to share her blessings, and she has never asked for anything in return. For all, for all of that, we are blessed. Our next lamplighter is Ms. Shannon Brandt. A spirit that is not afraid. That classic line from the Auburn Creed resonates with all of us who love Auburn University. Our next lamplighter is the living example of a young man who carries a spirit that is not afraid. Originally from Bruton, he came to Auburn as a freshman with a suitcase full of spirit. He immediately made an impact with the Auburn students as the campus struggled through a college experience bruised by the impact of a pandemic. Not allowing that circumstance to dampen his resolve, he inserted himself as a leader in the student support group for athletics, The Jungle. Working with AU Athletics marketing and event leaders, our next lamplighter has brought a huge dose of Auburn spirit to multiple sports, most notably Auburn basketball. In his spare time, you can find him covering Auburn High Athletics for the Plainsman. Utilizing the same spirit, he provides an enthusiastic and genuine perspective of the Auburn High sports program. He uses his spirit to help others stand out. The credit is shared with his peers and he truly enjoys their recognition. Whether at Neville Arena, Plainsman Park, Duck Sanford Stadium, he uses his platform to shed a positive light on others. It's never about him and it's always about them. Nothing has been given to this young man. He works to be at Auburn. He works for those who play at Auburn. He works for those he meets in Auburn. A young man from a small town comes from a devoted home with a devoted mom. It is not easy, but his spirit is not afraid. The next time you go, you head to see Bruce, Coach Bruce Pearl and the guys at Neville Arena, look for the young man with the straw hat and the crazy outfit and the big smile and the incredible spirit. His spirit is not afraid, and for that, he has made Auburn a better place. Our next lamplighter is Michael Floyd.
I used a pastor to tell you a story to get here tonight. All right. A legacy. How is a legacy defined? Its traits, the evidence of, his, of its existence. In the 1960s, the country wrestled with social issues right in front of the public's eyes. Evening news, daily papers chronicled the every move of our country's disagreements. Auburn, like many other southern communities, was divided by race in the 60s where our children attended schools, where we lived, the careers of our citizens. Our next lamplighter began his working career in the Drake Recreation Center. As a child of the Hudson Line and the Spencer Line and the Back Line, he was determined to provide the current youth a life that he had missed out on. Listen to a quote from a good friend of his and a friend of his children. The Lee County Training School and the Boykin Street School and Drake High School were proving grounds for local Negro youth, as well as area youth from beyond the city limits of Auburn. Here, the educational influence from role models introduced life-changing personalities and exposure to a world outside of the drawn lines of exclusion for them. And from these youthful experiences, and from family strength and a de de determined work ethic and learned discernment, a future vision became his reality through dedication and confidence and trust and leadership and care that was emblematic in the badge that he wore as a city of Auburn policeman. Tonight's next lamplighter became the city of Auburn's second African-American police officer in 1970. He was determined to guide and to protect and to show the youth around him that there is a roadmap of opportunity that pushed beyond society's boundaries. He was the first full-time black officer in the city of Auburn to hold the following ranks, sergeant, lieutenant, and captain. Commander of the Uniform Division, responsible for field operations in 42 officers, later served as commander of, invest of the Investigative Division. He was a leader, and he was tough, and he was in charge. If you had a complaint, he made the complaining officer write a special to verify their issues. He could be particularly hard on rookies using old school methods to improve their work ethic, improve their performance, and prepare them for greater responsibility in their future. His legacy, the last four Auburn police chiefs were trained and mentored by this lamplighter. That's evidence and that's definition. Some people have guardian angels. Auburn has had this outstanding man. Write me a special. It, could be, it would be interesting to read that commentary. My belief is that is a, and that, if that history would be in front of us, it would record a life lesson, a career lesson, and a police officer better for that challenge. At this time, I want to take the time to remember Mr. John Dunn, who was Auburn's first African-American police officer. Mr. Dunn was a fine man and a good dad and a great Auburn police officer. Tonight, we celebrate Auburn's second police officer, black police officer. He was Auburn's guardian. He was a very special man. Our next lamplighter is Captain John Lockhart. And our final lamplighter, 
It takes my breath away. Defined as extremely exciting and beautiful or surprising, our final lamplighter and one of Auburn's most well-known businessmen commonly uses this phrase to describe his friends and his employees and their efforts. Exciting, beautiful, and surprising. Three words that certainly are emblematic of his talent and his business. Originally from Society Hill, he graduated from Auburn in horticulture, started teaching. A department head encouraged him to take his class to a local home to conduct flower arrangement, not just for a grade, but for a citizen, a citizen who played the role of a future customer. Soon other citizens were inquiring about this magical field trip, students and this gifted professor beautifying their home. In 1982, an abandoned building on South College that forever had been the home of Auburn's only radio station became the site for a new floral enterprise, the flower store. From the cramped footprint that formerly housed the early morning commentary of Bob Sanders, carried the dreams of the local Auburn High Baby Tigers, and carried the ball games of the Shug Jordan-led Auburn Tigers, emanated a store like no other. Here, the creative genius of the man from Society Hill began to create a buzz in Auburn. The arrangements, the gift selection, were of an imagination never before seen in Lee County. The customers flocked to the old gravel parking lot that could barely hold more than a few customers. This entrepreneur, recognized by his first name only, soon became one of Auburn's greatest ambassadors. Every customer became his friend. They were welcomed to his shop with his warm demeanor as his new visitors were awed by the creati crea creativity that was before them. As we can imagine, many of his friends were Auburn's seasoned citizens, those whose life were long and whose care of all things Auburn was immense. Our final lamplighter was drawn to these good people, some who could no longer drive, but could go the places they needed or wanted because he provided gift cards for taxi service. In addition, Village, village Friends receives his constant support so that those same citizens are not faced with a day in their home but can get out. And he also has a great heart for underprivileged youth, wanting them to have experiences that they could not afford and would normally see by his contributions and donations. This year, the flower store celebrates its 40th anniversary. The old radio building became too small, and its current location was opened in 2002. A guy from Society Hill, a gifted creator, a genuine heart who loves his customers, still taking our breath away after 40 years. Our final lamplighter, Mr. Stanley Sistrunk. Thank you for all of you being here tonight. I want to thank our staff, Cynthia and David and Allison, for all their support and help getting us to this point here tonight. Thank you, Rachel, for your help, as always. I want to thank the Gooch Performing Arts Center for letting us use their beautiful building for this event. As I tell people, Auburn's not a perfect community, but it's a really great community. I hope you'll find your, place, find your way to get involved here in the future and help us continue to make Auburn a very special place. All these individuals will be available for you outside in the lobby here in just a few minutes. Y'all have a great night and a great week, and God bless you. Thank you for being here.